everyone. Uh, I'm Ambarish Mitra, co-founder and chief product officer of Grey Parrot. Uh, really good to be here. Just waiting for my slides to load and I'll get going. But today, basically, I'm going to talk about um, how can we tackle the global plastic and waste crisis with artificial intelligence. Now, this is a big discussion happening in COP26 as well. Of course, this is a very relevant forum too. Uh, but this is one of the problems of our times, and I'd like to show some light on that how artificial intelligence and technology can be used to solve some of the larger issues. So everything we ever buy becomes trash, you know, because nothing's forever other than love. But everything we ever buy becomes trash. And we can see over $12 trillion of consumer goods eventually become waste. And I'm only talking about consumer goods here. I'm not talking about fashion and other. This is just packaged goods uh, that we buy from supermarkets and, and stuff like that. And there is no way to really monitor where our waste goes. You know, we think when we put stuff in the right bins, in the right places, magically the trucks come and take it away. But there are, we produce over 2.1 billion tons of solid waste every year. And only 1% of it ever comes back. You know, and that 1% is still a bit exaggerated number. The reality would be actually much lesser. And most of it is done by hand. And the reason this is happening is because there is no data, there's no transparency, and that means there is no accountability. And remember that what can't be measured cannot be managed, you know. So all of us here globally care about the waste crisis so much, you know, but it is a completely offline industry in a very online world. We are buying these goods every moment online very easily, but how it's being disposed, there's very, very little digital footprint. To an extent where you know, $40 billion worth of recyclables are going to reach our landfills by 2040. You know, there'll be two times more plastic generation. There'll be 87% more burned or dumped plastics and other waste in landfills. There'll be four times more plastic in our ocean, costing us $1.5 trillion a year. And this is the most interesting point. Even if we substitute more than 200 million tons of plastic waste into other materials, there still be three times the need to recycle our plastics to cater to the recyclable needs and to cater to keeping the planet sustainable. So it's a very large problem. And post-pandemic, it's become bigger because we bought more and more goods. And it's becoming very apparent. And even though we talk about it and we're sitting on it every day, this is not a problem that is going away. As we are speaking, millions of tons of waste is being disposed, not in the way we would like it. So imagine a technology that could audit any product in the global waste stream and prevent this can of Coke being found in a random beach being incinerated. So on that very premise, we build a company, Grey Parrot, based out of Britain. And the main reason behind it is to unlock the financial value of waste and to transition us into a more circular economy and actually to have an environmental impact. How we are doing it? We are doing it with large-scale deep learning, computer vision, artificial intelligence, and to drive analytics and more transparency and automation in how the waste flows in material recycling facilities. And what Grey Parrot is about is Grey Barrett 
is a waste analytics platform which is allowing waste producers, waste sorting facilities, and regulators to get huge amounts of data to actually solve and tackle this problem head on. We could have gone down much more upstream. We could have thought of smart bins in your household. We could have thought of planting our cameras in the truck. But we thought the only way using you know, deep learning, as many of you know in this room, could be applied to hundreds of fields in our life. You know? It's a very impactful technology. But the reason we chose to put it right downstream, where majority of all municipality waste gets thrown into these large moving conveyor belts, and then some of them get recycled, but most, most gets you know, sent to other countries uh, or packaged in a way uh, where act or gets burned down or thrown in landfills or ends up in oceans. It happens, and I'm not blaming that industry. That's a completely mechanical and manual-driven industry. And think about a large city like Berlin or a large city like London where so much waste flow is going through. They cannot, through manual labor and mechanical ways, cope up with it. It is a lot of stuff. So this is one industry where artificial intelligence can really maximize and solve this problem. So today we are announcing this whole gray parrot waste recognition system, which is a box size of like two DVD players on top of each other looking. It's a smart unit which has a smart camera and a CPU, GPU machine, which analyzes 100% of waste flow that goes underneath it. It has a dashboard which all plant managers, big material recycling facilities, like the likes of Veolia and Suez and Grundon and Bifa, massive waste management companies you may not be aware of that processes entire cities' wastes. They get to see this data in a dashboard they get to see a huge amount of insights, which I'll share in a moment. But also, because it analyzes everything that goes through, the API of the recognition system can be passed to other, other sorting arms, robotic arms, or other sorting facilities, uh, other so sorting machineries, which are mechanically smart, but do not have any cognitive intelligence. They know how to pick stuff but they don't know what to pick and where to pick and how precisely to pick. So it can really help the rest of the industry, which does not have AI, but are very big capex heavy investments to get smarter. So this sort of changes everything. What happens in our world now, what you're noticing, is this is a real example feed of a fast moving conveyor belt which is creating and analyzing. Those of you can read from far, you will be able to see such large classification is taking place. So 100% of waste is being monitored. Out of that, around 50 categorization of waste is happening. And 50, you may think is a small number. It's actually a very large number. You know, that's HDP, PET, PET clear, PET blue. Plastic itself has so many levels of classification brown cardboard, gray cardboard, aluminum cans. You know, I've only reached seven or eight, but 50 is a pretty large number, which accounts for around 90% plus of majority of municipality waste with recognition accuracies of 95%. So this is a preview of a dashboard, what a plant manager looks at it like. It is able to see the waste flow. It is able to see what is contamination and what is accepted level of waste. So you do not want to see a PET bottle in an HDP line, or you do not want to see a brown cardboard in a gray cardboard line. So for any given these plants, something is contamination and something is an accepted material. And they're able to analyze that data in real time. But above all, they're able to see the financial value of waste. Majority of these plants do not realize all these precious materials that are going through they actually have a very large market value. With 1% increase in purity in plastics, you can double the financial value when you're selling. So purity is very, very important in the world of recycling because end of the day, all of it is chemistry. And it, you cannot put two different chemical products and mix it together. So that separation is very important. So the AI can detect 
huge amount of differences which are not, not easy to pick up by the human eye. So these are heaps of products overlapping each other. And those of you who've used stuff like visual search before, when you're recognizing a Coke can or a Pepsi can in a perfect retail environment, that's the most beautiful state of the product, you know? It's like showcasing it. These materials, when they end up right at the end of their life using going through facilities, they're unrecognizable, actually. And it's a very complex computer vision problem which we're trying to solve. And, and scenes like this were yet able to pick on large-scale materials crumpled or crushed on any state on an SKU level, but also brand. And it's important to pick up on brands because we are entering an era of extended producer responsibility where things like plastic tax are coming into play and brands are ma being made to be accountable for this, but the government or the regulators do not have any data, like you know how much of a certain product bottle, which the brand says is recyclable, but does it, does it allow you to become, you know, when a, when a bottle has a cling film around it, you know, or a, a, a box which has aluminum cardboard all meshed together, these materials will never be get recycled. So even if you individually can recycle them, the technology is not there. So they have to take a little more responsibility. The governments and regulators are coming into play. This is the quote from DEFRA, which is the official environmental agency of Britain, which is saying that automated visual detection technology is required to scale this. And big regulatory changes inside EU, in the United Kingdom, and also in large, several states in US, Far East, in Korea and Japan, big changes are happening. And one way to address this at scale is, is artificial intelligence. This is just a case study of brand recognition. So what I'm showing you on the top picture is a gray parrot box mounted on a waste stream with a lot of stuff flowing through it. And you're able to see on a live dashboard uh, everything that is going through, uh, and it recognizes and classifies it at scale. So what it leads to is that with this data, the brands will be able to, sorry, the material recycling facilities would be able to create more purer streams, also get to know the financial value of waste, run this entire plant a lot more optimally because the throughput at which the waste goes and the purity of the waste are opposing forces. So because if you put a lot of waste go through the stream, purity goes down, and if you focus on purity, the throughput goes down. So there's a lot of detail uh, which goes through it. So uh, that's sort of the end, end of the presentation. I wanted to thank you guys uh, for allowing Ray Parrot to be here. And we are really, really committed to unlock the financial value of waste to transition all of us into a circular economy. Thank you very much. <laughs>